good, everybody? It's by keeping the Baki Rants uh, YouTube channel. Uh, I'm back again with another YouTube video. You know, I got a lot of uh, views on my uh, my last video. I got a, you know quite a few views. Um, not too many comments. I don't think I got a comment yet, but I did get some comments on my uh, social media, my Twitter, um, and um, uh, my Instagram, my uh, Twitter handle. Uh, Bach Dollar B A Q D O L L A twenty two, that's on my uh, Twitter. Uh, Baki twenty four is my Instagram. You know, got some comments about the video. A lot of people, a lot of positives. People like the video. You know, and it started some good debates about you know the bears. Some people like the bears. Some people still have concerns, things of that nature. Like I said before in the last video, I like I love debating with other fans. I love debating with well informed fans. Now, obviously. You have those idiot fans out there that just want to stay, say stupid shit and make no type of sense or just say shit just to say shit on social media and have no facts behind anything, what they're saying. But overall, you know, debating is, you know, is healthy. Debating is great with people who are informed. And, you know, I love debating with other, you know, football fans who are well informed and bring opinions you know, because obviously, you know, other fans bringing opinions will make you think about other things that you probably didn't think about or even thought about in your head. So that that's a cool thing about having positive debates. So I want to thank all, you know, my, thank my followers on YouTube. Uh, that was subscribers, excuse me, on YouTube, my uh, followers on Twitter, you know, and people who, you know, actually brought intelligent conversation some comments and things of that nature and, and the people who liked the last video uh this video basically we're going to be uh, talking about mainly uh bears upcoming game against san fran uh, from what i hear coach Nagy is going to be playing the starters which i think is actually a good thing definitely want to keep the momentum going that we built you know after winning the division you know i feel like you know a lot of seasons People, you know, teams wrap up the um, the division early, and then you start resting guys and all that. And to me, I feel like that's an easy way to get beat. You know, you start resting guys, you start, you know, doing all of that, and then all the momentum that you built, you lose it because you've been resting guys for a week or two, for you know. Come on, like let, I mean, obviously now if a guy's injured or hurt, like I understand not playing it, but if guys are healthy enough to play, guys should play. Now, my thought process on it is I would play the last two games, like the to me the third preseason game of you know of the preseason. You know how most teams, they play their starters into the third quarter in the third preseason game. Um, to me, I felt like that's how we should approach the uh, last couple games of the season. Um, and that's only if we didn't have nothing to play for. I preface my comments by saying that if we didn't have nothing to play for, I, you know, then I would say we should approach the last two uh, regular season games how the same way we play the third preseason game, that's how we should play. But we still have something to play for. Uh, we have a chance at the number two seed, uh, number two seed, in the first round bye. So that's definitely enough to play for for the starters. So I'm glad Coach Nagy, you know, definitely got rid of that notion that hey, we're, you know, we're gonna rest guys. You know, nah. If you're healthy enough to play, you're gonna play. Um, if you're injured and stuff like that and you need to heal, then obviously you're not going to play. Um, so we still have a shot at the, you know, at a first round bye in the second seed. Um, I think we're one game behind the Rams. So it's not really likely that we'll get the second seed, but we have a slim chance. So even having a slim chance at the second seed is, is you know, grounds for being able you know to have the starters play um you know it's any given sunday so any nfl team can beat any nfl team so the rams have been struggling ever since they lost to us a little bit so i mean i don't think 
they'll lose the next two games because I think they're playing a, a couple weak teams. But, I mean, like I said before, you never know. Anything happen, you know, the Rams might lose on some fluky stuff or something like that, and the Bears win, and we got the number two seed. So, you never know, but it is what it is. But we're going into the game against San Francisco. Uh, San Francisco is, a to me, a below-average team. I mean, they're on, their, like, I think their third-string quarterback, so we should be able to dominate this team. But as of recently, San Fran has been playing well. Uh, I think the last couple weeks they've been – I think the last couple weeks they won a couple games with third stringer. So, I mean, you don't want to take them lightly at all. So, I feel like we should go to San Fran, business mindset, go in there and dominate. You know, go in there and kick the ass. Don't even, you know, let's let's go from the from opening kickoff. Let's put our foot on their neck and, and finish them off early so we can, you know – not even play around and even risk further injuries uh, going into the playoffs. So let's go in there and let's handle our business. Um, overall, the Bears should, you know, win this game. Um, but like I said before, any given Sunday, anything could happen. So that's why it's, it's important to play your starters and keep up the positive momentum we've built you know, over the course of the season and keep that momentum going into the playoffs, you know. So, let's go in there in San Francisco, handle our business. Um, outside of that, you know, one, the biggest, the main thing about this video, because I, I know I said earlier the main thing about the video was going to be Barry San Fran, but I'm going to change that on the fly a little bit because pretty much everything that I just said Prior, you know, not prior, excuse me, uh, early in this video about the game against San Fran is pretty much all I'm going to really talk about. I have a couple of things that I mainly want to discuss on video, and that's um, Packer fans. The last uh, video I did a few days ago, I, I said I would make a video about Packer fans and really get into it and, and all of that type of stuff. This is, I'm going to get into it right now. Because Packer fans kill me. Like, legit. They fucking kill me. Packer fans, I know, you know how, you know, you on first take, Stephen A. Smith talked about how delusional Cowboy fans are. And I'm, and I'm in total agreement with that shit because Dallas Cowboy fans are delusional. But... To me, Packer fans are even more delusional than fucking Cowboy fans. Because the hate that I've seen on social media, on on Twitter this season for the Bears, like from Packer fans, it's like you know these sons of bitches is hurt. Like they, I mean, you just seen it from everything from week one on. You know, they were on the highest of high. They, you know, Aaron Rodgers and how he came back from, you know, being down twenty by 20 points or 21 points or whatever in week one and how the Bears were still the Bears and the Bears still suck. And as long as we have Aaron Rodgers, we're all right and all that shit. And I've been literally one of the many Bears fans who've been arguing against this crap with Packer fans on Twitter all year round. Yes, we lost week one. Yes, it was a historic loss, and it was a historic comeback by Aaron Rodgers. I am in total agreement with you Packer fans on that. It was. It was amazing. But here's what Packer fans didn't want to admit. While they were so en enthralled in this amazing superhuman, superman comeback that Aaron Rodgers did. Here's what Packer fans didn't want to hear. Was the fact that the Bears went into Lambeau Field and for the damn near for the first three quarters was kicking their ass. When is the last time we seen a Bears team step into Lambeau Field and dominate the Green Bay Packers? It was dominating. I mean... If anybody watched week one, 
Watch week week one. Packer fans were fucking quiet. Damn near the whole first half of the game. These sons of bitches was quiet. You can hear a fucking pin drop in Lambeau Field. Because the Bears were kicking their fucking ass. So, they don't want to admit that shit. They don't want to admit the fact that we were kicking the crap out of y'all. For the basically the, the betterment of the game. You know, they always want to talk about it and be enthralled in this damn historic ass comeback here and Rodgers did. But... Bears fans, we watched the game. We knew what was coming. We 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 watched the game. We were like, oh, the Bears are fucking better than them. I know Packer fans didn't want to admit that shit because they was on such a high with that comeback. But you know, Bears fans and the rest of the fucking football world, we they seen that shit. We seen that shit. We were like, hold up, we're fucking better than them. We are. Fucking better than the Green Bay Packers. And I love what Coach Nagy said after the game. Like that loss was going to benefit this team. And he was fucking right. That loss benefited this team. Because that loss propelled this team to even greater heights. And have an even greater chip on their shoulder. And they played better ever since. So, my Packer fans, again, like I said, were just all in awe of Aaron Rodgers and the superhuman shit that he was doing. They didn't even understand what the, the real the real problem, you know, that they had. The real problem that you had was your team was fucking flawed. That your team needed a superhuman come back from Aaron Rodgers to beat the Bears. Y'all needed that to win. There was a time where Packers, you didn't need a superhuman play from Aaron Rodgers or some crazy shit to beat the Bears. You know, there, I mean, as sad as it is to say, there was a time where the Packers would come in, Aaron Rodgers would do his thing and be done. But you could tell even in week one, the shit was different. You could tell that this Bears team in week one was different. And it's like Packer fans don't want to accept that shit. They just, they honestly thought it was going to be the same old Bears that they've been playing for years. And last week's game, at, you know, at Soldier Field was a combination of a combination and validation for Bears fans to show Packer fans like, look, these ain't the same Chicago Bears. We are better than y'all. And not only are we better than y'all, this team knows they're better than y'all. And not only does this team know that they're better than y'all, the NFL world knows that they're better than y'all. Like, hell, Aaron Rodgers knows that they're better. The days of the, you know, Green Bay Packers running away with the NFC North are over. I hate, you know, I hate to say it. Well, I don't hate to say it because I'm saying I'm going to say it sarcastically because I fucking love it. But I hate to say it, Packer fans. Your reign of just dominating the fucking NFC North are over. No more of the days that because you guys have Aaron Rodgers... That guarantees that you're going to win the division. That that guarantees you're going to make the playoffs. Newsflash, motherfuckers. It doesn't matter if you have Aaron Rodgers no more. And that's the fucked up thing about it. Is that the Green Bay Packers have been built around Aaron Rodgers so, so fucking long. That they never developed the rest of the fucking team. Like you never gave... Aaron Rodgers is a good defense. The one fucking year that you gave Aaron Rodgers a defense, they won the Super Bowl that year. That was back in, what, 2010? That was the last time that the damn Packers had a decent defense. Like, you've given them no defense for years. You've let his skill players get old and never really replaced them. Like, you gave him nothing. Like, literally, you wasted years of Aaron Rodgers, to be totally honest. You wasted years of Aaron Rodgers. 
But the reason why the Packers were able to do that bullshit is because of the simple fact of for a long period of time in recent memory, all you needed was Aaron Rodgers to win the NFC North. Like the Lions are ass, have been ass for years. The Bears, we've been bad for years. And Minnesota has been up and down. So because of that, Green Bay has had a easy path to the playoffs every year just because they had Aaron Rodgers. They didn't need to have a great defense. They didn't need to really replace his skill weapons because you had Aaron Rodgers and because of the fact that you had two teams in the division that were bad and one team that's up and down, they were going to make the playoffs every year. It's similar to how the New England Patriots win the, divi- win the division every year. They win the AFC East. Yes, Tom Brady is great. Yes, the New England Patriots as a team and organization is great. I don't take no I don't take anything away from them. They're fucking great. But at the same time, they're in a division with three of the weakest fucking teams in recent memory. The Buffalo Bills, the Miami Dolphins, and the New York Jets. Those three franchises have been three of the worst franchises in the NFL for years. I read an article an article the other day. The best quarterback in the AFC East outside of Tom Brady, outside of Tom Brady, the best quarterback in the AFC East was Chad Pennington. When the Jets had Chad Pennington years ago, that was the last quarterback that was actually decent in the AFC East that's not named Tom Brady. How shitty is that? I mean, Chad Pennington ain't played in the NFL and fucking at least a good what, eight years, nine years? Like, come on. The Patriots have had an easy road to the playoffs every year because you have three weak-ass teams in the division. So the Patriots, by default, were going to make the playoffs every year because by default, they were the best team in the damn division every fucking year. Same thing you could say about the Green Bay Packers. Because of how piss-poor bad the Detroit Lions are, because of how bad the Bears have been in recent memory, because of how up and down Minnesota has been, Green Bay has had an easy road to the playoffs because they had Aaron fucking Rodgers. So they didn't need to give him anything else because it was an easy road to the playoffs every year because of how poor the other teams in the division was performing. But see, now it's different. Minnesota is, is, is a good team. The Bears have become a good team. Yeah, Detroit is still piss poor, but you but Detroit has always been piss poor. But Minnesota and the Bears have gotten better. So now the easy path to the playoffs for Green Bay is not so easy no more. The days of you having Aaron Rodgers, so because you have Aaron Rodgers, that automatically gives you the playoffs and when the division are over. Because the Vikings and the Bears aren't going anywhere. Both teams are young teams who are hungry to win. Evidence of this year. Aaron Rodgers is not great enough to win this division anymore. I know everyone wants to kiss his ass, but he's not good enough to win the division anymore. The days and the years of just needing Aaron Rodgers or just having Aaron Rodgers and that automatically gives you the division are over. The Bears defense is not going away. That defense is young. They're athletic. They have Khalil Mack locked in for years. They are going to be whooping Green Bay's ass for the next five to six years. Easily. That defense is not going away. Minnesota's a good team. Minnesota is, is not going away unless Kirk Cousins bombs, which is quite possible. Because Kirk Cousins, and I'll get into another whole video about Kirk Cousins. Because the fact that the Minnesota Vikings gave Kirk Cousins $84 million is a fucking joke. Like, what? 
What did you see in him playing in Washington that said, yo, we're going to give this motherfucker $84 million? Like, like, I don't even blame Kirk Cousins. Like, the way Kirk Cousins is playing this season, it's the same way Kirk Cousins played his whole fucking career. So I don't fault him because he's just playing the same way he's always played. I fault the Minnesota Vikings organization for giving this motherfucker $84 million. Like, you're paying him $84 million, but you knew what you were getting when you paid him. What evidence did he show you in Washington to say he was worth $84 million? Now, I'm not saying that Case Keenum, who was the starter last year and led him to the playoffs, was this top echelon dude. But you knew what Case Keenum was going to give you. Just like you knew what Kirk Cousins going to give you. Because you see the fucking evidence. So, I don't understand it. I, I will, for the, for the life of me, I will never understand why the damn bike. I said it when they gave it to him. Why the fuck would you give Kirk Cousins 80 for me? Kirk Cousins is not a franchise quarterback. It's a, it, Kirk Cousins is a good quarterback. He's a solid quarterback. That's about it. He's not a guy that you're going to lean on to say, lead us to the promised land. That's not Kirk Cousins. That's not him. That's never been him. That's not him. Kirk Cousins is the type of quarterback that he will win you games and he will lose you games. There are going to be games where he looks like an all-pro. Then there are going to be games where he looks like, what the fuck are you doing? That's Kirk Cousins. But that's another you know story for another video. Because I'm going to get into that. But back to Green Bay. Um, the Packers, you know, they never understood it. They never understood it. They never got it. They never understood that. They never thought that other teams in the division were going to get good. They never did. They just thought that as long as we have Aaron Rodgers, we're okay. And now they look like shit because they have a worse record than the Cleveland Browns. With Aaron Rodgers. And and the next thing that also pisses me off is how all these damn injuries pop up for Aaron Rodgers. Now I understood the leg injury that he that he was he had because we gave him a leg injury in the first game. So I understood the knee shit. But right after the fucking game that he got his ass kicked by us last week, now with all is a groin injury. He 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 got a groin injury when he threw that hell mary pass to end the first half against us last week. A groin injury? Like, like, come on. No one wants to hear that bullshit. No one wants to hear, Even if you had a groin injury, who wants to hear that shit? Just admit that you got your ass kicked. It is what it is. The Bears are better. Admit it. It's over. The days of just because you have Aaron Rodgers is over. It is what it is. But Packer, the Packers can't admit that Packers fans can't admit it and don't want to admit it because they're pissed off. Like, I talked about in the last video just a little bit about how I had a Packer fan saying, yo, even though the Bears have a better record, you know, even though the Bears are leading the division, and even if the Bears win the division, if they don't beat us, they ain't nothing. I'm like, really, Dad? You sound like an idiot by saying that. But I was like, okay. So when the Bears whoop the Packers' ass, at Soldier Field, what are you going to say? Well, that's not going to happen. We have Aaron Rodgers. That's what this guy was telling me. Fast forward to last Sunday, the Bears win the game. Didn't hear a peep from the same damn guy off Twitter. When I, you know, when I tweeted at him, I'm like, yo, bro, what, you know what happened? Don't want to hear nothing. I don't hear shit. Talk shit now. Talk shit now. I mean, you I mean, you said that the Bears was wasn't, wasn't going to be on shit unless they beat Green Bay. We beat Green Bay. So why you ain't talking saying nothing now? What's the problem? You know what the problem is? The problem is Packer fans the days Having Aaron Rodgers and that being the be all end all are over. Understand this shit. The 
the Bears are going to be whooping the Packers' ass for the duration of Aaron Rodgers' career. Y'all heard it here first. And watch this shit happen. Because the days of Aaron Rodgers just kicking our ass every fucking year, those days are over. Not with this defense. Not with Khalil Mack. Aaron Rodgers is age 36. He's not going to last long with that shitty offensive line y'all got playing against Khalil Mack for the next three, four, five years. That shit's not happening, Jack. So with that being said, I've been saying it on Twitter. I'm going to say it in here on my YouTube video. I don't want to hear shit from Packer fans for the duration of this season. Packer fans shouldn't have shit to say. You can't talk shit. You can't say shit. I want y'all motherfuckers quiet to next year, and then we can revisit the shit talking next year. But until then, I don't want to hear from Packer fans. Packer fans shouldn't have shit to say. Just suck it up one time, shut the fuck up, and hope for next year. But don't be tweeting at me and shit, talk, try, still trying to talk shit. Because, I'm, you know, all I'm going to say is you have a worse record than Cleveland Browns. That's it. That's all I'm going to say. You have a worse record than Cleveland Browns. Y'all are ass. But with that being said, I wanted to just throw this quick video at you. Uh, to talk, you know, talk about Packer fans and the, the shitty nature. I'm going to go further in depth in the next video about how Packer fans really was on social media trying to get on me for weeks before this Packers game. And now, you know, shit done changed up. But if you like this video, please hit a like on my YouTube channel. Please comment because I would love to have debates with any other fan bases or have debates with other Bears fans about what they like or dislike. Can't wait for the game against San Francisco. We gonna bear down, baby. Shout out to, you know, all my fellow Bears fans. Let's keep bearing down. Let's keep rocking it. Let's keep supporting this team. Why can't we go to the Super Bowl? You know, you know what it is. We get to the playoffs, anything can happen. This Bears team, to me, can beat anybody. I'm on board. So let's finish the regular season strong and let's get to the playoffs and let's see what we can do. Bad down, fans. Bad down. This is Baki from the Baki Rants. I'm out.